Hey everybody, it's me, Susan Gerbic, and I am here with a bunch of really my good friends. And we just came back from um, some really cool stuff you're going to hear. So I'm just turning on the camera. They're going to record some of their audio and stuff. And I, I can't be on the, I can't say much because I already said a whole bunch. So, <laughs> da -da! Da -da -da -da! <laughs> hey Cindy, hey everybody. So they're going to record this podcast thing. And I'm just going to like be a fly on the wall here. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so go ahead and do your little things, you guys. Talk amongst yourselves. Hi, Carmen. Carmen's watching. Hi, Carmen. Carmen? Is, is there somebody really watching? Yeah, Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Yeah, Carmen's watching. Are you watching. doing a live stream? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hi, Carmen. I think you're just recording. Hi, Carmen. I am recording. I'm recording. No, but like just recording and then for later and you're going to upload it. No, no, so, go ahead. Wendy will be here pretty soon. Okay, go ahead. Oh, my goodness. She says, hi, guys. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Adrian Hill, and I am sitting in the dining room of Susan, I am sitting here in the Susan Gerbig's dining room, and she's moving my A&W Zero Sugar that Richard Saunders wishes he has. <laughs> And we're going to be talking today about a little, little adventure we had today. We went to the... Yeah, I'm going to stop that. I'll, re, I'll take out the little clunk, 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 clunk in the audio. <laughs> you think she'd know better. <laughs> Don't look at me. Just talk amongst yourselves. I'm just making sure you're not going to be moving around too much. But <laughs> See, Richard Saunders has rubbed off on me. He's going to be very proud of me doing that. My eyes are glazing over. So we're going to be talking about a great adventure we had today. We went to the Winchester Mystery House. And I have with me Karen Araujo. And where are you from, Karen? I live in Salinas, California. And I understand just a few doors down from Susan. That's right. Just end of the block. Awesome. How fortunate am I? Exactly. I'm Jane Salky, and I live in Eugene, Oregon. Yes, another one who took a plane to get here. That's right. I'm Cindy Clark, and I live in um, Pacific Grove, 30 minutes away. 30 minutes away. So we're all from everywhere except for you two who are both in Salinas. All right, so I'm going to start off with Karen, because Karen is the only person who took notes on our tour. And I wish I had been... I wish I had been as conscientious. Conscientious, thank you. Conscientious is her. Or I, I guess more is the word I'm looking for is I wish I had thought of it myself. I thought to plan. So, what did you find out? Well, I want to say something about uh, writing things down. Uh, I am a curious person. I often find I have many, many questions that you can't really address on a tour. And I'm eager to share the things with my friends. So I've learned at mo movies, plays, the opera, I will do this and I'll just kind of concerts, I'll just jot down little things. Usually not this much, usually, yeah. but so we can uh, uh, discuss it later. And for the yeah. listeners, she has two pages here. <laughs> it's great. So what, were, what, did, what kind of notes did you take down? I, the notes I took were uh, questions I had, things I wanted to know more about. Um, I put stars by at least seven things where I noticed things that I appreciated in what was being said because I noticed that a lot of things that were being said were um, kind of niggling at me or giving me a little, a little bit of a grr. <laughs> and so I thought, well, let's count the positive things too. So that's what I did. Think, uh, the, the things I captured on here were things I liked, things that caught my attention, things I wanted to know more about, uh, things I appreciated. All right. Well, why don't we start with the niggly things? Well, the niggly things. Um, some of the niggly, the very first niggly thing was our wonderful young tour guide uh, when he said um, that the name, the chosen name of the premises by um, uh, Mrs. Winchester was uh, I Iyanda. And he said, I can't, he said he can't be sure how to pronounce it. 
was that the first time he tried to pronounce it? Could he look up how to pronounce it? Especially when you're a tour guide for the actual house. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it's uh, Yanda, if it's L-L-A-N-D, it's Yanda, not Yanda, uh, right. unless she pronounced it uh, differently on purpose. Mm -hmm. And that he said she named it that, quote, I wrote mm -hmm. this down, because uh, there were a lot of Spanish people, a lot of Spanish influence in the area here. And... I don't believe that that's the case. So I just thought that was dehuman. It was dehumanizing her instead of an opportunity to personalize her choice. Correct. And I'm not sure if I actually talked about it in my talk as to the fact that she went to Spain with her husband, and it was actually a near. It's a lovely place that she loved, mm -hmm. and she wanted to remember that adventure with her husband in Spain, and it reminded her her of an area in Spain. So, yeah, very different from what he said. Yeah, so that was a little girl right away. Right. Uh, yeah. Painting a woman, an opportunity to show this woman in that light, a place of joy that she loved, mm -hmm. and then she called a name that reminded her of her husband and, and their joyful time and That's love, right. a, yeah. a loving, yeah. instead of a, another excuse so to glad, add to it. I'm so glad you wrote notes because that was something that I noticed right away, and I'd forgotten it. That's a, that's, my memory, right? That's our all, all our memories. So I'm so glad you wrote those because that's an important one. What else have you got? Um, um, so I'm looking for a, a niggle. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> this this is critical of our of our tour guide, uh, but he used the term over and over that he had a uh, a guttural feeling mm. that uh, that ghosts may be watching him. Yes. He, that uh, he had had a, a, you know, you just get a sense when you're in places and you may get a guttural feeling that something's going on. And he said that over and over. And I put that on my yes. girl list. <laughs> I actually thought of Princess Bride. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't say that. I, that was my inside voice. <laughs> I think we had a lot of inside voices happening today. Yes. And then, uh, as if it would, you know, they added another layer of, that I wasn't ready for. Uh, I was prepared to hear about, you know, kind of hauntings and ghosts and eerie feelings and so forth. Uh, I learned something new today. <laughs> I, I learned going. <laughs> about residual spirits. I wrote that down. <laughs> Residual spirits, um, these, it, even if people are Ill alive, they can be there just as an imprint of people who have been here before. And it's like a tape playing over and over, or something you read over and over. Residual spirits. Yeah. So that was a doozy. Yeah, that was the one where I actually said, Can I? Can you be clear? Can I ask a question? Did you actually say this was living people to leave these? And he said yes. Yeah. So I think there. I think that his point was that their energy is left in the space, and then it repeats itself, it replays itself. And he mentioned that um, that their their aud their audible uh, noise is replayed. And after they leave, like mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. on his day off, mm -hmm. uh, his coworkers could hear him speaking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything? So, so that was a that was another niggle on yeah. the uh, spirit tour. Right. Yes. That the very first the first tour that we did. Yes. Right. So so I would say um, those were. Two niggles. Any other niggles, or is that all the niggles? Those are all the. Oh, it's, oh well, <laughs> when when he mentioned she used quote thirteen a lot. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do what I just did. I wanted to sigh deeply, yes. and I didn't. Instead, I just quietly wrote. And I was trying to write in the back of the corner of the tour, not. Be exasper be looking at him at the head of the group, be exasperated, <laughs> sigh, and start writing. I was just trying to be subtle at the back. Did you learn anything new today? Um, I did. I learned um, 
well, the thing that delighted me was right off the bat when he was talking about um, uh, her meeting uh, the love, the love of her life, who ended up being her husband. Yes. Uh, lived in the neighborhood or next door or something yeah. like that. Yeah, they but, were neighbors. But yeah. he described their relationship uh, that at one point they became extremely social. I wrote that down. I said, isn't that a nice, polite term for it? They became extremely social. And then they ended up getting married. I like that. He had a few cute quips, I thought. Yeah. Um, I gave a star and a yay to saying uh, that there were, quote, many theories about um, why why she moved she, there. She, yeah. yeah, why she moved yeah. there, what was going on. Uh, then then he went into the medium story, but at least he started it with there are many theories. Now, he he didn't at that moment illuminate any of the other theories, <laughs> but, uh, but I thought, okay, well, that's something. And then the second one is there were the uh, double exposure pictures. There were portraits uh, that appeared to have, you know, kind of a ghostly presence. Yeah, the, in mumbler, the, photograph. the mumbler photo photographer. There you go. And, and a star for, um, you know, telling what was going on, the process that was actually going on with the double exposure that's right. and everything. So I thought, yay, that's, that's really good. I was actually a little bit worried at first because he was going down. It sounded like he was talking as if it was true, that it was, he actually did capture these spirits. So it was wonderful when he actually got to the explanation and that he was the best at it and so on. Hi, we're just recording the oh, show here. Oh, hello. Oh, are we interrupting? Something? Not at all. You oh, aren't. You're <laughs> adding <laughs> too. <laughs> I'm not going to stay. I just, I'm No, gonna, you do I'm stay. Gonna, you do stay. Can I you get my, I, I left my house at 5 o'clock this morning. Oh. oh it's now 7.30 at dark. <laughs> so I... I liked the double exposure that, that he, that he uh, leveled. Start over again. But with that, I like the double. Just don't do that part. Okay, because this is this is I just wish you found the cards against humanity. I didn't. I'd never lost them. Well, I mean, use the bathroom in the in the. She took them out. So okay, so another star, a second star I gave was um, when we went into the room that had the portraits. Uh, the photographs, and I wrote uh, about uh, double exposure. So he was talking about the portraits that were in vogue uh, at the time where you had like a ghostly presence mm -hmm. seeming to be hanging around, and he talked about mm -hmm. uh, people charging a lot of money for them right. and all this stuff. It was trendy. And then he explained that the technique they used was a double exposure. So I was really grateful that he revealed that um, trick they were using. Yeah, yeah it's excellent. <laughs> Any of you have anything to add to your thoughts about what did she call them? The niggly moments? <laughs> what are you feel? Like, oh no. Um, I think I was too busy taking photographs and I didn't really pay attention. <laughs> you to and me both, huh? <laughs> and um, but one thing I was really puzzled about was when we went to the basement and we was going to do an experiment and we just sat down and he gave us a lot of props and then he said, okay, time to go. I was like, okay, what was the experiment? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that program got suddenly cut short when right. we needed to because the other tour group yeah. was about ready. Yeah. Right. So our yeah. tour got cut short. I think one of my fi favorite moments was when you asked about Sally Winchester being. Oh, sorry. I guess we should say something. We have a new addition to our round table here, cool. and that what's tell, and it is Wendy. Hughes? Hughes. Oh, and it is Wendy Hughes. We <laughs> 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 this is our last name. We're Jenny. <laughs> yeah, this is Wendy. Wendy's here. <laughs> so well, um, Robin and I came back later. Yeah, so we've got Robin and Wendy here. So Wendy, when we were in the earthquake room where they simulated or gave had noises about the earthquake, you made a really fun Oh, comment. no, it, was, it wasn't just me. So tell your story. Tell your story. Was walking around, <laughs> mumbling. She was taking her, her very careful notes. And I didn't really understand about the notes until later that she was, like, keeping track of what was really happening yeah. in that environment in the, at the Winchester Mystery 
for the deal. And, um, <laughs> and she was going, but Sally wasn't even there. She was in, what was the name of the other guy? I said, Arthur, Arthur, right. I said, if she was even here. Yeah. And, and, thought, and when he turns to me and says, what are you talking about? I said, wasn't she in Arthur too? And so I'm going, well, why aren't you saying that out loud? <laughs> well, if you're not going to, I'm going to. So I said to the tour guide, you know, she wasn't even here, was she? <laughs> <laughs> and so that poor girl said, well, we don't actually know where and, she was. And that's actually the correct answer because nobody really knows right. where she was. And I was really pleased because my understanding from Susan is that they used to say that she was trapped in a room yelling and screaming for hours and she couldn't get mm -hmm. out. And oh, I'm, that's horrible. So I'm really glad that they've gone away from that yes. because they really don't know where she was. She might have been there, but she, a few days before, I can't remember how many days, she was in Atherton because she wrote a letter to her lawyer from Atherton. So they know she was there at that time, but there's no record of her correspondence or anything saying she was trapped or distressed or trapped in her house when it was collapsing. So we don't know. And so her answer was actually good when she, when you confronted her on that. That is good. Well, I was trying, trying to be confronted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, no, that's not the, not confronted, but asked her. That's asked her about it. Yeah. And there was one more thing that I would like to mention from the, foot, the first tour, which was a big girl. And uh, it was when he mentioned, uh, this was uh, the he tour guide we had. We had a, a nice young woman uh, in the second tour. Uh, that she may have worked with uh, Mary Hayes, the clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Or, or, or Miss Hayes. I don't know if I wrote Mary. I can't read my writing if it says Mary or May. Right. Do you know Miss no, Hayes' it, it, first name? Uh, I think it was Chinuit. Okay. Was, yeah. So I wrote down, uh, oh, there we go. Yes, there is. Chinuit. I yes. actually wrote Chinuit. Nice. And, uh, but then uh, said, we don't know. We're not sure. And then kind of went on about what that person yes. was doing. A was lot of details. So if you're not, not paying about attention. Not at all. Yeah, so if you're not paying attention, it seems like that uh, Winchester was into all of mm -hmm. that. And then, uh, but it started with, they may have known one another, we don't know, and then went on all this detail. According that, to Mary Jo Ignapo's book, they actually were very aware of each other, at least Miss um, Hayes was aware of Winchester, and from what my recollection of reading the book was, is... Chinoweth was not very happy that Winchester was not participating in the higher society like she thought she should and was involved, her family was involved in the local newspaper and she was kind of behind the nasty sort of false accusations of her being a spiritualist and being a little crazy. So that was that a put down or was that what was the um, who knows right I mean I don't know we were we were trying we were having a lot of fun I mean this is not very scientific but we were trying to guess what was going on and we said well maybe Chinnawith was the mean girl of the day <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say when I was coming down Highway 101 South homebound and there's a historical sign you know next yeah. next exit Hayes Mansion. Mm -hmm. I did some mental tisking. <laughs> <laughs> and it might have even just been a little bit, okay, well, I'm really into this. Sarah, and it was very common for the higher-ups in the society at the time, people who were rich, the women were really into spiritualism and it gave them some power. And so maybe she assumed, even though Winchester was reclusive, that she was maybe even more into it than she, than was. she was. Yeah, so she was obviously making assumptions or being mean, or just being clueless. Well, I will say that I felt like the whole tour, both tours, were based on a lot of making something out of nothing. Yes, yes. I feel like that was the, the foundation of the entire tour. It was like, yeah. how can we like create a tour and make it last for over an hour? Uh, what things can we say when we really you know, we want to sensationalize it, so let's make something out of nothing. So there was a lot of 
um, like leading you into like thinking something without really yes, saying yes. it while saying, well, not, we don't really like, know, we don't like, really, yeah, we don't really know, but, but you know, and then the mainstream we, media does this too. Yes. They, they'll, they'll sort of hint at, this is yes. a sensationalist headline. Yes. We don't really know. Yeah, we don't really know, but, but then they, you could they, find they out. go, then, then they, they turn the, mm -hmm. the, their verbiage into like leading you into thinking yeah. something different. That and more, something more significant. Yes. Do you know and, a great example of that, I think, is the 13 hooks. Yes. We had walked by a room, yes. I don't know if any of you noticed this, we walked through a room and there was a little alcove there were five hooks. They were not mentioned. We walk into the next room, there's 13 hooks. She's noticed yes. the 13 hooks. Yes, I did notice that. Yeah. And, and I want to say one other thing about the, um, the remodeling, the construction, or the architecture. Um, there was a lot of um, like pointing out of all of these little odd little nooks and crannies and why did she do this and um, one example is near the end um, in one of the final rooms there was a cabinet and she said and, and, and there was nothing particularly odd about it in my mind but she said why did she build this cabinet it's, it's up to you to decide it's just very odd um, many people think that it was to uh, confuse the spirits mm -hmm. um, as you know it's up to you to decide and, and I thought to myself well you know maybe she just had a purpose that she was wanted to utilize mm -hmm. for it some purpose you know something she had maybe she had a bunch of towels she wanted to put in it or maybe she had a bunch of um, China or it's I not don't hard know. to come up with reasons yeah, is there, it? whatever purpose she had in her mind or yeah. that her servants needed it for some purpose and what, uh, what for whatever it was I know that she had a purpose mm -hmm. um, and why would uh, we need to jump to the idea that she needed to confuse the spirits as uh, the primary possibility when there are infinite possibilities and mm -hmm. so she says it's up to you to decide could it be because she wanted to confuse the spirits or is there another reason you yeah. know so like for a million reasons here is something Robin and I noticed when we were walking back from the restaurant toward the Winchester mansion. Mm -hmm. In all of the advertisements, it still has the pictures of the mansion and the trees and the garden, but the neighborhood has changed. Yeah. And now, you it's easy to drive right past it. Robin said she actually drove right past it on her way there. Because they built those condos. And they're tall, yeah. yeah. And they're very tall so that the mansion no longer dominates the, na the, the environment in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and the, and it felt dwarfed. I mean, I've never been any other time, and I have to admit it, that it did feel dwarfed. And you're imagining this big, huge house. And it's not insignificant, I have to say. But I have to say, too, I was really excited to go. I mean, just to finally get there after all the reading I have done. It was very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And you, re, reading what you wrote and hearing you talk about it was, it, it enhanced the, the experience. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Thank it's you. true. And, the, and you're, and you're <clears throat> and it is a California landmark. Yeah. yeah. And here's my um, other thought about it that I've been kind of going over in my mind which is one of the um, tour guides mentioned that the, and I can't remember whether it was the spirit walk or the other one, that the, um, the furniture was not Sally Winchester's furniture. Correct. But it was empty. The house was empty when they, um, when they it was, yeah, when it was, when it was turned into a tourist attraction. Yes. And that what they did was that they researched and found and bought period furniture from that era of that quality. That's right. And it looks beautiful. And there are some rooms where you couldn't go in, but you could see through glass, like they had put windows mm -hmm. into these rooms. And what it reminded me of was the FDR home in upstate New York 
and also Hearst Castle, which is another um, yes. uh, tourist attraction we should go visit a different time. I've been to Hearst Castle. You have? I have. Does it blow you away? I, I mean, the swimming pools. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. beautiful. And the, a little more luxurious than what we saw today. Yeah, in, a lot fact, more. in fact, I think that's what I was surprised at being at places like Hearst Castle and then coming here. It was evident the amount of devastation that happened because of the earthquake oh. in 1906. And it was evident that not much building happened after that, despite their claim of their 38 years of building. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, from 1906 on, not much happened. And I would say, now this is just a perception that's not based in anything that's... I didn't bring my piece of paper and mark down the rooms. It felt to me like it was 75% unfinished and 25% Quite lovely. Yeah, what I was wondering is why didn't they renovate the parts that were falling apart? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Because they because they knew the style, so they could copy the style. And just like you talked about the furniture yeah. not being the actual furniture Sarah owned, they could also say, well, we recreated this wall and the stat and the style yeah. that we believe she she used because we knew mm -hmm. the type of wallpaper. She and there was evidence use. of the wallpaper on bits right. of the, the plaster. And they had the yeah. roll of the, they had the rolls. They had the rolls, yeah, so they knew what it was. Room. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you know what my guess is? And you're gonna, oh, I'd love to hear what you guys say about this. My guess is they wanted to keep it spooky. That's why I was That's saying. what I thought. Because do you remember yeah. what he said? Because I asked, because he said, the first guy said, most of the hauntings we have are experienced in this part of the house, which is the unfinished, icky part. And I asked the question, why is that? Right? And he's like, I can't remember what he said, actually. <laughs> but it wasn't a good answer. It's just where they like to haunt. And it, it, it just, so I think it makes it spookier. There's no lights. They kept it dark. And there's that suggestibility, mm -hmm. right? So people will expect to hear something or see something. I thought that the other thing was the shadows, the pictures of the shadows. I thought, really? Do you remember those at the very beginning? You had the pictures. I don't think I paid much attention. <laughs> <laughs> the shadow was dressed in a Victorian. The drop. shadow was dressed in, but I kind of, I couldn't even really make out what it was. It was like a black blob. One, one <laughs> looks, one looks like uh, a cat, an owl, or a Batman. <laughs> They decided it was a small person yeah. in Victorian garb. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I took pictures I, I, of the pictures. At first I was up. thinking, what are they talking about? I didn't even I couldn't even see what they were talking about. And then finally I thought, was that that black thing that's sort of behind the person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the pictures that they had to illustrate these strange happenings in the house I thought were quite amusing. Mm -hmm. Well maybe I did take a look at some of those pictures because like you like you guys like, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they were going to have I thought that they left it that way um, because it was easier to distinguish the places where the tourists were supposed to walk and keep it separate from the rooms that were furnished. But maybe that's just too practical. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I want to say something totally off topic. Perfect. Go for <laughs> it. <laughs> Speaking of pictures, yes. what I loved was the picture of the tour guide from the 30s or 40s oh, yes. with, the, with her, her, the her dress shoes. and her high heel shoes. Oh. Uh, I love that because that just like it took me out of the moment yes. and took me into the reality of what women uh, lived, mm -hmm. you know, their lived experience, um, you know, how they had to dress in the 30s and 40s or whenever the picture was taken, maybe the 50s, I don't know. In her high heel shoes, shoes. Um, mm -hmm. spectator pumps, the picture oh. of the tour guide. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Because here I was, you know, pathetic on this tour. Um, one hour, my back is breaking. <laughs> and here's, a, here's a woman, you know, who leads tours all day wearing her high heel shoes, she wearing like nylon was... hose and a dress and... Yeah, you know, the just shoes thought. looked uh, remind me rem reminded me of the shoes in the famous World War II, uh, the end of World War II nurse kiss in Manhattan. Those uh -huh. sh she was wearing the same kind of shoes. Yeah, 
kind of just a square high heel. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think another reason our backs were hurt, hurting is because there were a lot of low ceilings because uh, they were built for her. Yes. <laughs> she yes. was very tall, yes. and yes. I was ducking a lot. Yes. I don't know about you guys, yes. but I, not oh. at all. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I thought was really funny, and uh, this is a, another moment that we could call it. What, what is the moment you called it, Karen? Your he Gur. Moved, Gur moved, a Gur. the Gur move. I had a Gur moment. And that was when the the tour guide for the spirit tour and I was saying, boy, you know, you, you could really, uh, you have to be careful with your back. And he says, yeah, I have to go to my chiropractor every month. Oh, and you goodness. might have to go, I recommend you go to a chiropractor too. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, bite your tongue, bite your tongue. <laughs> That was a great idea. I've never seen those those I uh, love short those stairs. stairs. Mm -hmm. I've never seen those in a house before, and I love them. So here is an impression I had from the research I had done, and because of all the literature, I thought there was only one staircase that was like that in the house. There's a whole bunch of them, and they're awesome, and they're narrow. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Took, I took my piece of paper. It's all I had to measure with. Yeah, and so it was. And this is 11 and a half inches here. So it was two of these across and about this much. Wow. So really just about 24 inches. Yeah, somebody had said two feet. So yeah, I think that, they're two, that's what two I was feet wide. It on. But they're nice and long. The steps were long, mm -hmm. just only about two inches tall or something like that. Mm -hmm. So instead at home, instead of piling a lot of stuff on my stairs and waiting until <laughs> <laughs> until someday in the you future when I'm going to carry a lot of stuff, I would just go right on up. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> tour which was the general tour uh, I, I want to say something about the spirit the, the spirit tour mm. we had to put on the hard hats mm. uh, white hard hats that said uh, which white hard hats that said Winchester Mystery House on them and um, I was wondering if they limited the number of people on the tour to the number of hats they had. <laughs> And that's easily solvable if they want to increase their profits, but I'm not going to advise that. But anyway, I did try it out. I actually bonked my head. Yeah, I saw that. Soundly on a wrapped uh, pipe. Yeah, uh, didn't hurt me at all. Uh, so, but there I was, were lots of places we needed that hard half. That yeah. was it. But the 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 um, second person, the person who led us, uh, um, the young woman who led us on the second tour, the general tour, I found her to be. Um, very, a very smooth, very, um, you know, a, a very uh, nice. She didn't lose any of her rhythm, no matter what you threw at her. So mm -hmm. she seemed much more experienced, she was or, polished, or yeah. at least yes, yeah. polished. Yeah. Thank you, or uh, either more experienced or very gifted at it. So that was good, and I thought it was so kind when I continued. I, I quit counting at five. The number of times I broke the rules. Because I either did not hear or I forgot. Uh, and she was so gracious the way she would address it to the whole group. And we want to make sure we're not leaning on the furniture. And it was me leaning on the furniture. And we, I want to reiterate, we don't allow videotaping. It was me videotaping right next to her. Right next to her in the room. So she was quite gracious. Yeah. So that's a big star. Um, uh, I liked right off the bat... Uh, they they pointed out that uh, Sarah Sally Winchester designed the spider stained glass, yes. and that that a pattern you'd see throughout the house. Yes, thank you for acknowledging her creativity. Yes, and um, that she designed the home custom for her height. Again, thank you. I mean, I just got this whole thing of a uh, woman standing up, yeah. st standing up for herself and using her wealth to create an environment that's good for her. Yeah. Not you know, not for whatever someone else might choose. Yeah. I liked that. Another star was uh, again when the tour guide said maybe she was distraught about losing folks and that she went to a medium or something like that. I thought, okay, at least they're saying maybe. They didn't you know, before they did not say maybe. Um, I liked that they pointed out it wasn't the actual furniture. Okay, they're not lying about that. They're not trying to put it forward. Right. So that was a positive. Can I stop you? Yeah. Because I just reminded of something that we talked about in the car, but I wanted to bring up again. In the first tour, he said that 
the baby died, their daughter died, and three years later the husband died, and a few years later the, all their other people died, and it's amazing, you know, that she went, suffered so much grief in such a short time, which was part of the war that I talked about yesterday, yeah. and then we went to the second tour, and it was the baby died, and 15 years later the husband died. Right. It was actually correct. So I thought that was really odd that on one part of the tour, the spirit tour, it was fast death. It was the old mythology. And all of a sudden we go to the other tour. Now, is that just lack of information or are they doing that intentionally between the two tours? The spooky one, it's haunted because of all the deaths or she's crazy because of all the deaths. And the second one was a little more generous to her. I thought that was interesting. Did you guys notice that? I yes, know. I did. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I liked that uh, there was uh, some mention of, these are all positives, uh, there was mention of the um, investing in the sand between the floor layers mm -hmm. for safety. I thought that was interesting. Right, wow. state of the art, yep. you know, taking care of business here, not cutting corners and, mm -hmm. and everything, state of the art. The wallpaper was state of the art. That was new, that was a new thing. Uh, that she was utilizing. I liked the talk of um, her uh, relationship with the workers with regard to shelter and meals, providing mm -hmm. workforce housing way yes. back then, yes. right? If, it, uh, 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 if there was a married couple um, with children, whether or not they had children, they would have a house on the premises, a little cottage on the premises. Single men would be in a bunkhouse provided. Single women lived in the main house if they were employees, and everyone got meals. Mm -hmm. And uh, but again, the bell—the bell was to ring the, for people to come to the meals. It takes away that wonderful being a responsible employer when it wasn't required that she do that. It takes that away to then make the bell something weird. Yeah. <laughs> You Which know? was to summon the spirits at midnight. The, well, what did she say? She yes. says, you summon the good spirits at midnight. Yeah, how yeah. about an admirable, yeah. it's an admirable quality. She was an admirable person, and this was a tool to, you know, that, yeah. uh, that yeah. helped her carry out her admirable ways. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and then the, um, the person, uh, and the person actually said in response to someone's question that, um, they were moved more towards, uh, they've moved more uh, to the term legends mm -hmm. and, and adding more history. Mm -hmm. She did say that. That's yeah, a she positive. actually said that in... When we asked. Yes, yeah, so when we asked. When asked. Right. And the thing, again, that gave me the biggest gur was <laughs> talking about, again, why she might be doing this. This is the second person uh, uh, proposing a reason why uh, Winchester might have done this. Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. We have all heard those. And maybe she she did have an interest in architecture, and she had all these books and <laughs> magazines about architecture and some interest in skill, but we can't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and which one is more likely? Exactly. I think it's interesting that they talk about her grief, her supposed grief, over these relatives who are old and died 15 years apart. Yeah. Um, because usually with historical figures, usually grief is sort of minimized and glossed right. over. Yeah. Good and, point. you know, I've even heard um, uh, David McCullough say, you know, we it's a little bit absurd to think that people in the past didn't grieve as much as people right. in the present just because people died more often back then. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Or died young Younger. More often. Um, but, but it's unusual to dwell on the grief that's part of the show. Right. Yeah. No. They didn't dwell on it too long, though. They yeah. just kind of mentioned it for sure. Well, it was supposed to be a grief that made her superstitious. Right. And, and a little bit crazy. Yeah. 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 Crazy mm -hmm. with grief. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What, it, what about her, uh, statement that our tour guides, uh, statement about using the name Sally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I choose to not use mm -hmm. Sally as I, I did not know her. And that was something that her friends and family called her. Isn't that hmm. interesting? I didn't know how to feel about that, to be honest. I thought it was actually a pretty good reason. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
I felt everybody who knew her knew her as Sally. She signed her documents as Sally. Exactly. It was her public name. It wasn't a. a no. Also, she she did call her Sarah. She did not call her Mrs. Winchester. Yeah. Good point. She could have called her Mrs. Winchester. I called her Mrs. Winchester when I started yeah. talking today. That was good because you don't want to slip with Sally. Because I know I, I got the idea from Brian Dunning. I mean, it's obviously in, in Mary Jo Ignopoulos' book that she was called Sally and this is what she went by all her life, etc. And Brian Dunning said, I'm going to honor that. And I thought that is a really nice way to honor her. Mm -hmm. I think that's... So I kind of went with him. And I thought it was interesting to hear a different perspective on it. And I'm guessing that they decided to just go with the legal name at the beginning, and that's just all of what has been, and it's hard for them to change it. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Susan? No, I thought it was disrespectful. I think that she was never asked that question before. I think, because I asked that question. I'm the one that asked the oh, questions at the yeah. end. Yeah. I waited till we were done. So Kenny so Biddle's here, by the way. Oh, hi. Many people have been here to say hi, by the way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I didn't think it was. I, I don't think. I I don't, don't think she's ever been asked before. about the Wikipedia page before anybody in there, which is yeah. what I did. Mm -hmm. And so she says at the very end, <laughs> you're gonna have to cut half of this out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut half. Of, I'm gonna cut out three quarters of this, but that's okay. So what happened is at the very very end. So what happens? You have to be far away. Well, I can't see what's recording. So, um, um, so what I thought at the very end, we went to the the tour is over. We're, we've been really good. We've not challenged these people. We were on our best behavior. Susan Which tried was, not to be a couple times. I was very good. <laughs> right? Yeah, you should have heard and heard her in the seance room. I was wonderful. She said what? We bless these spirits. Or I, I thank the like spirits. That. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. done. I said, thank you, spirits. <laughs> <laughs> so, so something she picked up from the mediums. Yeah, yeah. I get it from mediums. So when we were all, <laughs> and then I went like that to the table. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> table, um, so when we were all done, and we're standing around, I'm like, fair game. We're leaving. They can't kick us out of this place because we're leaving right now. So, I heard that she had been called something else. Oh, and, she, and the tour guide. This is the female tour guide on the second tour. Yes, yes, Sally. And I'm like, yeah. And she said, but I don't feel like I can call her by that name because that was her personal name that her family and friends called her. And I, and I was thinking to myself, you've been calling her Sarah all day, you know. And you've just been belittling her for the last hour. Putting her down is not a, a woman of intelligence, even though they'll, they'll sneak that in. Well, actually, she was very intelligent. She had many degrees, and she spoke five languages, and she could play all this piano and, and violin and all this stuff. She very well traveled. Four languages. Four languages. But, you know, she was a spiritualist, and she was, didn't know what she was doing, and you know, on and on. It is just like you've been putting her down for the last hour. A woman has put down this other woman because you're trying to make money for your place and you can't call her, you know, Sally by the name that she wanted to be called. And then I asked her, I said, so, you know, it's very different. I've been here before and things are different. Why is it so different? I said, uh, and she's, I said, you know, I read the Wikipedia page before I got here and it's very different from what you've been saying. She says, yes, we've been trying to change to a more, more historical, uh, uh, way and not like in the old days, which was much more spiritual. And she's right, it's changed. which is good. It's not as spiritual as it was, but it's still extremely spiritual. And it's very belittling of Sally. Mm -hmm. I'm just really sad at how how they did that. It was, I don't know. It just but she also chucked a cr criticism at the Wikipedia page. She said it's not all accurate. Well, she said we've been trying to change. I don't know when she read it last. The page has only existed for, what, 18 months since you wrote it? And so she says, well, we've been trying to, uh, she says, we've been trying to, my impression was she was trying to, ref they have read the Wikipedia page, which is more historical, and that their tour has been changing to a more historical tour. 
Didn't you and tell me that, that they had volunteers from the organization that were coming in and trying to edit the page? Yeah, one person tried mm -hmm. to yep. edit the Wikipedia page. So, I was, so here. I was in the room at the end with just Robin and Morgan from yes. the uh, Santa Cruz Skeptics. Shout out to Santa Cruz Skeptics. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she uttered these words. I didn't hear what was asked. I can tell you what was asked. And she said, oh. the, she acknowledged the old truers were not always accurate. Oh. She did say that. And then she also said, I used to not believe in ghosts until I work, started working. Really? No. I missed that part. Yeah, she did. I used to not believe in ghosts. Till I started. I but the thing is, somewhere totally different. The thing that. is, I don't even believe that they actually believe it because they do it for the entertainment or the money. You mean the money? The, the money, the money, the, the money, the money they make from the entertainment. I don't believe that they really believe that. It's, and it's the something guy, that entertains the, the tourists. I think the first guy did. Admitted that he was a theater person, so I yeah. think they're hiring actors, yes. basically. Right, and the girl, Kim, she is a, a live wire, firecracker, young girl. Like, I can just picture her going to auditions and, and just like using her exposure yeah. on the tour. To After sharp I think her. practice, yeah. yeah. Well, we don't we don't know that's In true. Prof. We do know the other person was um, yeah. an actor. That I want to say about um, uh, well, I want to say something you? about the seance room, but first I want to say that um, I went there on a um, tour field trip when I was a kid, mm -hmm. like I think junior high, because we used to go to San Francisco, Golden Gate mm -hmm. Park, the Dion Museum. We went ice skating. At, Eastridge and all of this stuff, and we went to Winchester House, and um, and for years, I'm 60 years old now, and for years, what I had was, what I walked away with, oh yeah, the Winchester House, that woman that had seances, and she kept building because she believed she would die mm -hmm. if she did. That's what, for all these years, that's what I believe, and I feel now that I am you know, I really take my feminism seriously and I am working to make sure women are recognized for their achievements and my heart is breaking for women who were not seen for who they are. Mm -hmm. To think that I have inadvertently been part of belittling this woman feels really yucky. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, but for this, I would have thought the same thing. So I'll, mm -hmm. what I will do is simply change my mind and anyone I encounter, I will offer them the new information. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like I've contributed to um, belittling women, dehumanizing a, a very admirable woman. You do the opposite of that every day of your life. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Do you have regret yeah. now you saw yeah. it in perspective? Even though it's not your fault, I understand that. Yeah. 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 Yep. And then the other thing about the seance room, this is very serious. Um, Leonard uh, Tremble was uh, next to me, so I put my hands on the table and I did the thing, right? But I forgot, and I did not write this down because it was, I was really, uh, I had tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, something, the record, it was a, you know, a, a seance might have sounded like this or whatever. Yeah. They had this woman's voice saying things. But it was something about, Something about, isn't it good to know that they're on the other side and you don't have to be sad or whatever it was. And it just punched me in the gut. How cruel. How cruel. And I got, I got teary-eyed just thinking how many people, you know, even though it was a long time ago, I just, just felt the cruelty of that. You want to say something to you? One of the things that I've noticed, and nobody has brought this up, they mentioned it twice, is about that baby. I can't imagine watching. The baby was born, lived three oh, weeks, and the baby died of starvation yeah. because it was unable to get protein. Yeah. And I can't even imagine what it would have been like to watch your child, your infant child, your only child, starve to death when you are equivalent to, you know, a millionaire yeah. and there's nothing you can do and, and how, how much grief that would have been at the time and how, uh, 
I don't know. The whole thing was just, to me, it was like, oh, yeah, and she was really sad about her daughter's death. And they kind of talked about it. Like they said, when they opened up the safe that was supposed to have all these precious, you know, gold Gold things in it. And it was a lock of her daughter's hair, her baby's hair. And people go, oh, but I still... Just the thought of your infant child starving to death when you have everything. Three weeks old. For three weeks, you're watching your child. I can't even imagine becoming religious after that, just remaining religious after having gone through an ordeal like that. And so when Adrian was talking on the car ride home that she was very religious, I said, I've never been given the impression she was very religious. I know she she participated in church. I know she donated stuff. But I, I, her family was heavily religious, and I just can't pull the. Is it Pen, maybe Pentecostal? I can't remember. She had several. She gave she to had, several, churches, several churches, Baptist, they were involved in Christian churches. Kinds of churches in New Haven, and one of them, they were really good friends with the the pastor. And it, it, but it was very progressive. It was a progressive yeah, congregational. church. It was a congregational. Mm-hmm. And Sorry. keep in mind the social pressure. It, there was just ex, an expectation that people belonged to, to churches. Church, right. Yeah, it yeah. That's what mm-hmm. everybody did. That's right. It wasn't like, oh, there is an array of right. uh, denominations here. Which shall we choose? You know, everybody was expected to go to church, yeah. and it was part of the fabric of the community. Right. And a lot of people went simply because it was you know, uh, uh, this is what my family has always been. So yeah. we walk in this building every week. So it wasn't necessarily based on deeply held beliefs. And then, regardless of that, you have, uh, is it a belief in, is there belief there? Or is it just the community? Mm-hmm. Is it be a belief in an omniscient God, an omnipotent God? Mm-hmm. Are, are you a deist? Mm-hmm. You know, so there are all these layers yeah. of... Um, oh, one of the other things that she said, said, I just thought mm-hmm. of, she said that they feel that she may have moved out because her sister's husband got a job out. There. I'm thinking, what the heck? Oh. Why did though? I heard okay. that. I thought, Susan. what are you talking about? She is the C- hold on, one of. The- hold on, Susan. <laughs> I, I, I just get myself Stop. mad. <laughs> There's an element of truth to it, which is always what happens with these things. <sighs> so Sally tried to convince her family to move to the West Coast. It was Sally's initiative. She was trying to convince her sisters to come with her. And it so happened, I, I, if I remember correctly, she actually did move out here first. And if not, they may have moved out all together. But it was after their initial looking into it that her brother-in-law did get this position back here. And it didn't last long. They didn't like him. So they booted him out, mm-hmm. and the um, they went back east, and I think he he, he um, I think he separated, and his wife came back to to here, and I think it might have been Daisy's father. I can't quite remember. Daisy's the niece. Yeah, Daisy's the niece, but I may be wrong with that. There's there's so many parts of the family, right? But so there's an element of truth to that, but. No, it wasn't because they were coming. The man did not need to make her no, move here. She no. made the decision to come decision. here for good reasons. It was warmer. There was and climate. It was beautiful. Climate. She had arthritis. It and it wasn't to follow a man, even no. her brother-in-law. It was just so another way of demeaning this Correct. intelligent, wonderful woman. Yeah. Nor was the inheritance the sole means of her money. She maintained her wealth. She grew her wealth. She grew her investments. She managed her investments. She did the architectural designs. I mean, a, a lot of things that are admirable. But, and it sounds like she was perfectly well respected during her life. Mm. The, the stories were made up after she died. That's no, no. It was during her life. They started during, because of Chittawith. Yeah. <laughs> that spiritualist that's woman. Right. However, that mean chick. I, that's one reason. I'm sure I'm oversimplifying it. Right. But unless you're, you know, Susan Anthony or something like this, I don't know that, when, that people are going to pay 40 bucks to go on a tour to celebrate the accomplishments of this particular woman. So they've added all this other mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I just wish there was an equal interest, even if 
They wanted to play up this spooky aspect. Yeah, but yeah. some other aspect of lifting up the history. Have another tour, which is the Sarah Sally Winchester History Tour. And the thing is that they wouldn't have done that if, if I hadn't been this, you know, original myth that she was actually a spiritualist. And she... And Speculation on why she built yeah. this huge, huge house. And well, and the people who had but if she was just, if it was just a large house and then she lived in it, that would be the end of the story. Yeah, it might have been torn down. Be the end of the story. Either it would have been sold or it would have been torn down. Yeah. Um, I think it would have been torn down. It was in great but, disrepair. Yeah, yeah, but it wouldn't have been a tourist attraction. No. It's the myth that had started, that had, I guess it really hadn't gotten anywhere and it's when the people took over the house who bought the house after she died they just ran built it up yeah, yeah. they cherry picked they chose the side the journalists because there are articles and i've done them in past presentations but didn't do it yesterday there's actual articles from the 1800s and the 1900s that defend sally winchester and yeah. say that it's bunk and so they are both out there but they chose only one Version. And, that was and, I, version. and I can also say part of the reason is because they had a bigger picture. It wasn't just going to be sold as a house. They wanted to build a fairgrounds. And part of it was the, the house. And what happened is the fairgrounds did not do well financially, but the house did. And that's where hmm. they went with the house. So are you saying without the paranormal aspect, the house would have been torn down? And the same family. It's still in the hands of the yeah. same family. Well, they couldn't the sell it. They tried to auction it off. No, first they tried to sell it. They sold off whoever was in charge of the properties when she died, sold off most of the properties. And they couldn't sell it. So they decided to try and auction it off. And it was evaluated, the house was evaluated at nothing. And it was only the property value. Well, you saw what happened, that property oh. value. That place is booming. Yeah. Everybody was buying stuff. Um, Carmen was saying, um, on the live feed, she was talking about how when she was growing up, that place was magnificent. It stood out because she was raised in the San Jose area. It was stood out as, uh, you know, the building. Now it's hidden by everything. It's, it feels diminished. It's absolutely diminished. It's diminished. And, and uh, just the last 20 years. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's all new. It was the time that I first went there. Right. It did stand out. It was standing alone. There. Yeah, now it's hidden back there. Now I drove right by it, and I had to drive around the block to find it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of value, Wendy, you you were whispering to me. I yeah. was whispering to Adrian. I didn't want to interrupt. Um, the quote on the um about how much her in annual income was. Or oh yeah. Income. Her was daily income. Way different. Oh yeah, we know that daily. to be very different. Data. Yeah. The I stuff have... I wanted to just stop the woman. And the man and say, hey, why don't you read the Wikipedia page before your tour and maybe you could get the facts right. <laughs> and that's all they'd have to do is like every day, just reread the Wikipedia page. But There's so much in there. Not to do that. According to Mary Jo and Yako's book, they're instructed not to do that. So. And they were, the, the, one of the tour guides told us, you were, you were, it was when you were asking about how they, how they learn their pattern. I said, is this, is somebody give you a script or do you guys get to do your own research? How much control do you have over your script? Mm -hmm. That's what I asked her. Right. And what she, her answer was that they get a bare bones kind of basic mm -hmm. script when they first start working as tour guides at Winchester Mystery House. And it's up to each um, tour guide on the job to develop their pattern in their own style, their own style of talking. And I, our second tour was, had gotten kind of a late start. And so um, we, I could hear the tour guides from the next tour group behind us. And what their tour guide was saying was way different from what our tour guide was yeah. saying. So and maybe they, they do have a free reign. Who knows? They do. Yeah. So they, ha they. Who knows? I mean, what she? I think what she said to you was something not to the effect that they make it up as they go along, 
but just that they have a lot of leeway about what sounds natural coming out of each of their mouths. Yeah, I think they can pick and choose. And if they, I think the tour has changed in the years I've been going there, which is wonderful because I think it's leaning away. It's getting better. It's getting better. Yeah. But the, I just what Cindy said, the paranormal aspect is the reason the thing exists. Mm -hmm. But I personally think that they could run with it with a, um, no, they could take and they could say, this is, re the, here's how history has been written and she has been, she has been portrayed. Now we know better. Mm -hmm. Let's look at why, let's look at the, the fables and the folklore and here's the truth mm -hmm. and how it's been manipulated through history. I think it would take new owners to do that because right. you got to have somebody blame it on who did all the problems. A fem you can even write, rewrite it. You could tell the story from a feminist perspective yes. and really lean into the history. And even if you could bring into the family members, like you said, Adrian, her sister mm -hmm. was an extrovert yeah. and she was getting arrested for animal rights. And yeah. just, she, you know, she, I sounds like the whole, it sounds like a bunch of powerful women yes. who have, done amazing things and I mean she couldn't even vote no I got I got two text messages um from Winchester one for each of the tours so about to asking your one. opinion yeah I'm gonna think thank about you. what I'm gonna say yeah. yes we should thank you for your booking we hope you had a great time will you share your experience in a review <laughs> yeah I'm gonna send him the Wikipedia <laughs> article and say read the damn thing so you can get some of your facts straight well, somebody did. Morgan I, said he told I was it. Say, yeah. Speaking of the Wikipedia article, Morgan came up to me at the end of the tour and said, "You should tell her that you wrote the Wikipedia page." And I'm like, "Well, yeah, maybe." But there was this little bit of me that thought, "What if they come out and attack me when they find out?" We were. <laughs> we had finished the last out. tour. We were walking out of the building, going to lunch. That's why I thought it was fair game to say what I want. Yeah, what I said. It, it was perfect. So he decided, because I was like, hmm, and I decided not to. I almost did, and then I decided not to. But Morgan went up when everybody was gone and said, well, then I would oh, you're there? Answer. So you could correct me if I no, no, say you're anything right. wrong. And he said, well, the woman who wrote the Wikipedia page was on the tour. And apparently, his, what she said, do you remember what she said? She said, well, the Wikipedia page isn't completely accurate or something like yeah. that. And I hope that she learns... She corrects it with the facts from this tour. Yes, I hope that she corrects it with the facts from this so tour. So now we got to watch, see if the edits come I, in tonight from that I page. Have like to, I have something I'd like to add to that. Yes, go ahead. That I just remembered, uh -huh. and I, and this, but this is true. When she said the old, the old tours were not always accurate, yes. she said that in response to that, and I 100% got that she thought the Wikipedia page was written based on the information gleaned in the tours. So that you are going to make corrections based on the new oh. information you got in the tours. Because, <laughs> quote, the old tours were not always oh, accurate. So I 100% got that. Wait, uh, so you're saying that she thought she was going to correct it and make it more historical? We don't know when this woman read the last Wikipedia page. I don't know if she read it at all. But I definitely got that impression it, as though she, you were taking the tour and got new information today. And so, so the Adrian, old tours were not always accurate. So now what you will need to do is you'll need to delete the page altogether and say, and then write, we don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make up your own mind. Make up your own mind. Now that you have all this information... Yeah, yeah, and I'm. Can I put some comments in here since the podcast? This is all going to have to be ripped out, and this is much more interesting. What's happening live over here? It is very good because I can look at this. So Kate Mac, Kate Mac says, "I love this conversation. I love this chat." And she says, "I foresee a lot of very interesting reviews for the Winchester Mystery House." And um, Carmen saying that Jerry got that text also, you know, that, that he's got this. So all of us that attended, I think we should all send her the Wikipedia page and say. Do you have anything to add? Or 
Well, she had said that, you know, if you guys have something to add, I'll say, I'll say it. But the, it, there's been many comments that have come through so far. There's a lot of different people watching. Leonard's watching. A lot of people, a lot of people you don't know. But it's. <laughs> but I, I love this conversation. I think I'm just going to carry a camera around with me and film you guys. And especially because we're listening to a bunch of powerful women who have good, strong opinions about stuff. And we're seeing it from a perspective of fem, uh, uh, feminism. And I am not personally would consider myself a feminist, not in the traditional sense that we see it now, the way we raise our children. I raised boys and I, you know, that are men and I'm proud of them and I love men. So I, I don't see myself in that. No, no, but I don't. Right. But I don't want to be pampered either as if, if I need some special power. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. It depends on your, your definition of it. I've seen another video in conversation. We haven't even started the games. I thought that too. I was thinking the same thing. We should just throw them off the air. Here's the view. Except I want to be sitting down. We are all skeptical instead of just one or two people. Right. And it's 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 a powerful. I could see doing another video on this. More about the, the history of the page. Because you guys, all we've all been talking as if people know what we're talking about. Yes. We don't, the people who are watching right now are watching that are people who went to your lecture yesterday, yes. most of them. Yes. But it doesn't mean that, I mean, we're all talking as if they know who Sarah Winchester is and all that. Oh, um, the, oh, here Kat says, the sisterhood of Sally Winchester's truth. <laughs> it, it is. I think we should take back, and again, going back to the psychics, because you know that I feel powerfully psychic about the psychics is the power of women taking back the uh, taking back this uh, abuse towards women all they they do disrespect. to women disrespect, disrespect and taking advantage of women there's something powerful about the women saying oh no we're done with this yeah. and this is what you're the bunch of women you know there was a lot of men on the tour with us you guys there was, yeah. but and, and they're you know I'm, they're just not here that was behind us. I was listening again. I was uh, near the back and I was listening to what he was saying. He did not use the, w the word nay as mm -hmm. our general tour host did. Oh. He was making definitive statements. Like what? About, um, well, just fill in the blank with, uh, it may be true that she you know, was, uh, so was building because of, right. He said, he the said she did. He just said she did. She built because he, he of, she was off the spirits. He did not say may. I did not hear him say may once. And another thing I wanted to say is our first guy, our first, uh, uh, tour guide, tour guide took us into the uh, basement and that's when he was going to tell us his, his spooky story, his ghost story and so forth. And he started with, um, a box of these little dum dum. Yes, what the heck? Lollipops. And he passed them around and we all got them. And then he told a story. Yeah, yeah, they brought these uh, dum dums out, you guys. Another, what the heck uh, was that? tour was coming, then another tour uh, was coming along. And, um, and so he said in what I perceived to be a very disappointing tone, oh, okay, well, we have to go on now. Yeah, I was going to I was going to do something with this, but I won't. And so we moved on, and then I went up to him and I said, well, if you have 30 seconds, you know, what is it you want to say about what you would have had us do with this? And he said, well, I would have had you take it and uh, everyone put it in the palm of their hand and uh, oh, put, that put their palms thing. forward and see if something happens. <laughs> so so he would have had a room of 20 people all putting out their hands like this. Some people with, shaking. With a, lot, with a sucker on it to see if one of them <laughs> fell over. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts that it would have been the spirits are among us. He and, wanted to see who, and which of us. an A name. Do you have an A anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to see which of us were suckers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why they're dum-dums. Oh, look at that. Well, oh. These are called dum-dums. The whole yeah. idea was silly. I like what that's why I said that paranormal tour was ridiculous and embarrassing. He was asking us to please 
rescue him from this job. <laughs> Please take me out of this job. Oh, Jerry, uh, Jerry's here too. Carmen says Jerry's here, also watching. So, yeah. So don't make sure. Go, We've oh, run Robin to the bone here. She's so tired. Bye, Robin. Take care. We'll see you soon. No, totally, totally okay, get that. I'm gonna stop recording. That's an hour and eight minutes. So I think I've got enough there to send to, yeah. to Richard. You're gonna have to edit that for oh, a couple days. Bye, Richard, if you're watching ever. No, I don't know. Okay, so let's play Cards Against Humanities. Because yeah, Adrian's favorite. never played before. And I should start a video just watching us play Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> but I'd have to set it up so I could play too.